It just sounds so clean with this mastering. I don't even want to touch it after this. This is literally the only thing that's on in my mastering chain right now, and it's just super clean. In this video, I'm going to show you how the Lander Mastering plugin completely replaced my mastering chain in FL Studio. Years ago, and for my entire career, I would have a load of plugins on my master bus to create a fully polished master. Sometimes I would export stems out, I would export the WAV file, put it in a new session, master that file. But when I came across Lander Mastering, it's super, super simple to just drop on the master. It analyzes your audio and it gives you a suggestion using AI to tailor master your song. It's insane and I'm gonna walk you through it. First, I'm gonna show you the song that I have. I'm gonna put Lander Mastering on my mastering chain and we're gonna be good to go. All right, and the reason why I wanted to show you that part and the reason why I play that part specifically, especially when I'm mastering, is because that's the hook, that's the loudest part of the entire song. That's where we're gonna get our maximum loudness. Whenever I'm mastering a song, I make sure to always play the loudest point in the song. That's very important. So on this, I'm gonna scroll these guys up. Normally, this is what I do also. I just throw a Fruity Soft Clipper and a Fruity Limiter on there just to get that mix punchy enough to where I can be creative, mix the song in an environment where it's sorta close to being mastered. That way I get a really good idea it's important to throw something on your master within that creation process to just get an idea of where it's going to be sitting that way it's not so much of a drastic change when you start mastering things and you throw that lander mastering plugin on there it's not so much of a drastic change to the point where you're like yo i get like kind of demoitis sometimes where you're really used to that demo and the way that demo or rough mix sounds and you throw something on and you're like yeah i don't like this i'm gonna scroll these up and i'm gonna mute them and i'm gonna put lander mastering on the bottom of my chain and a lot of times you can go ahead and you can put EQs or whatever you want up above, like above lander mastering to EQ things before you get to the mastering. I'm probably going to do that and kind of go back and forth, but I want to hear what it sounds like with just lander mastering on there. So now I have lander mastering on here and it says waiting for audio playback. So then again, I'm going to go to the loudest part of the song and I'm going to hit play right here on this loudest part of the song. It actually said to make sure that you play the loudest part of your song. And it's giving you little messages down here. It's optimizing the master. So let's listen to what it came back with after analyzing the entire song. Wow, bro. That sounds incredible right out the gate. Sheesh. When you play it back again, you're going to see this curve, right? You're going to see these lines and these waves. You can see that that outline that's on the top of the big blue wave, that's where it sat originally versus where it's sitting now. Three different types of masters that you can choose. You can choose a warm mastering style. This creates a warm vintage master with softer highs for a thick and smooth sound. Balanced, which is what we have it on right now by default. This creates a controlled master with a focus on balance, clarity, and depth. And then you can also choose an open mastering style. This creates a modern open sound with an emphasis on punch and presence. Let's maybe go through the differences. Let's try warm. Go to balanced. Sounds way brighter on balanced. Big, big difference. Well, let's go to open. Let's see what open sounds like.
I think I'm leaning more towards the balanced. It, it suggested the, the one that I think I like the best. Sounds brighter, obviously, than the warm side of things. Warm is going to sound warmer, maybe a little bit more duller in sound, I would say. Balance gets a little bit brighter. Open gets a little bit brighter, wider. You also have this knob up on top. You can see that it's default to negative 8.88 dB. This uh, adjusts the input gain, so it's the signal that comes into Lander Mastering, if that makes sense. If it's green, it's optimal. If it's yellow, it's acceptable. If it's red, it's too loud if it's white it's too quiet so adjust that accordingly right while you're playing do that right there Yeah, so I think that's good. It's bouncing a little bit between white and green. We want to live in there. You have an equalizer. You got low, mids, and highs if you want to boost, cut, anything like that. You have stereo field. Now, this be careful with this because this can really spread your mix out wide or make it super thin. I like to go a little bit wide on some of these masters, so maybe like a 20% wide. We can go drastic with it, see what it sounds like, pull it back. If you don't know what a knob or a level does, definitely do this. Crank it, come back on it. Let's listen to the original by bypassing this entire plugin. We haven't listened to what it sounded like now that we have Lander Mastering on there. So I'm going to bypass it and listen to this. This is going to toggle back and forth between an on and off, essentially, if you're not familiar with the bypass. That's without it. And this is with it. And you also have gain match. What's really cool about this plugin is if you hover over these buttons, it explains exactly what everything does. It really just kind of dumbs everything down for anybody at any skill level, including me. There's a lot of these terms that I still to this day don't know, don't understand. I'm not heavy, heavy technical into the mixing and mastering side of things. So something like Lander Mastering and giving these little steps, tips and tricks inside of the plugin is huge and it's essential. So again, gain match, it'll help you preview your original and mastered audio at the same volume to pair with greater accuracy it says to disable gain match when exporting or bouncing your track that's cool that's good to know let's go back into the macros here we have a presence knob it can control the amount of presence in the critical vocal range of your master add a little bit more presence some de-essing and the amount of that de-essing that it can do now i'm listening to that slipping where he says slipping away That worked perfectly. Compression, character, and saturation. You got a little bit of compression, tiny, tiny bit of saturation. And then you have probably one of the most important things. You got a little bit of loudness. We want to boost this a little bit. Use the Luffs meter to help you, it says. See, we're at negative eight luffs right now, which is pretty ideal. It just sounds so clean with this mastering. I don't even want to touch it after this. I don't even know if I want to throw an EQ on before. This is literally the only thing that's on in my mastering chain right now. And it's just super clean. If you want to try this out for yourself, hit the link down in the description below. Lander's always running deals on their full Lander Studio subscription. It's massive. It has a ton, a ton of plugins in there, not just Lander Mastering. So go try it out. Hit the link down in the description. And make sure to share this with a friend if you get me.